From the Convergence Studio in the School of Communication, this is Loyola News Chicago. In the news today, Russia invades Ukraine and Ukrainians in Chicago have strong reactions. And Loyola hosts a famous face to meet Loyola's own campus celebrity. Hello and welcome to Loyola News Chicago for our first broadcast of the semester. I'm Robert Malkamaki. And I'm Amelia Ickes. We'll have more on the Russian invasion shortly, but first we check in on Loyola's talk with Pope Francis. Pope Francis is on campus. Well, his cardboard cutout is, but he was here virtually. Loyola Chicago hosted a conversation between Pope Francis and students from North, Central, and South America. The virtual talk focused on the need to support migrants and the children of migrants as they move to new places. Loyola celebrated by having watch parties in the Damon Den and in Regents Hall. Sister Jean even joined in on the fun, taking pictures with the Pope Francis cutout. Many students enjoyed their time listening to the Pope. Muslim. It's nice to see like the head of like the Vatican Church and like for Catholics, someone being here. Loyola students are now a part of history. The Pope's virtual visit was a rare experience. Pope Francis, the first Jesuit Pope, has finally met with U.S. students who attend Jesuit universities. For Loyola Chicago, this was also a special event. This was the first time a Pope has ever visited the university. In 2015, the Catholic University of America hosted Pope Francis. Other popes, including Pope Benedict XVI in 2008 and Pope John Paul II in 1979, met with CUA students. We're following the unfolding situation in Ukraine. Russia's expected invasion of Ukraine started early Thursday morning in retaliation to Ukraine's attempts to join NATO. An estimated 40 Ukrainian soldiers and 10 civilians were killed in the early hours of the invasion. Ukraine is also reporting that over 70 military buildings have been destroyed. President Joe Biden identified Vladimir Putin as the, quote, aggressor of this war in a press conference earlier today. Biden also ordered harsher sanctions on Russia in response to the invasion, including blocks on technology. These blocks would limit Russia's ability to advance its military and aerospace efforts. The effects of the Ukraine-Russia conflict are felt by Chicago's large Ukrainian population, which is the third largest in the country after New York and Philadelphia. Chicago's Ukrainian consulate is just blocks from Loyola's Water Tower campus. The consulate has become a beacon for Ukrainian Americans and sympathetic Chicagoans looking for the latest information on the conflict. Many have left flowers on the gates in front of the consulate to show their concern and support. The events in Ukraine are being followed very closely in Chicago's Ukrainian village neighborhood. Reporter Kami Buranda and photographer Jacqueline Davis visited Ukrainian village this afternoon. Ukrainian village residents are marching down Chicago Avenue and Levitt Avenue to protest the invasion of Russia in the Ukraine. People are out marching on Chicago Avenue to show their support in Ukraine after the bombings by Russia this morning. Not knowing much about Ukraine until I moved to the area. Um, you know, I've fallen in love with the neighborhood. It's just really disheartening to know that a lot of my neighbors and everything are having a really hard time right now. cannot stand themselves. They need some our support. But they we, we have to help him with the military or even with the forces. But Ukraine cannot be just by themselves the only country facing Russia uh, as the biggest military country uh, you, you know to uh, in there in the Europe. For Loyola News Chicago, I'm Cami Veranda. Ukrainian village residents down Chicago Avenue. Continue to follow the events in Ukraine and we'll bring you updates in future newscasts. A change to Loyola's mass policy could be coming. According to the weekly health, safety, and well being update, Loyola says they're evaluating the mandate. Chicago is lifting its mandate with the rest of Illinois on Monday. The school also says the earliest a change to the policy would come is March 14th. Loyola's COVID testing sites at all three campuses are still running and testing students every day. The site is on the second floor of the Damon Student Center, partners with, and it partners with the Wellness Center and SHIELD Illinois. SHIELD developed a saliva test Loyola currently uses. Student worker Levi Welch says this site moved into this smaller room during the rise of the Delta variant. That's, I think, when 
myself and my coworkers started kind of feeling that anxiety about, oh, this is actually, a, this actually is a little scary. Like we're in a very close room with people that are potentially like sick with this thing that we've been scared about for a really long time. Welch also says faculty, staff, and students who still choose to test are always appreciative of their work. All of Loyola's on-campus testing centers are open from 9 to 6, Monday, Tuesday, and Friday, and 6 to 9 on Wednesday and Thursday. College students are still feeling the effects of the pandemic. Soon they will be able to apply for a pandemic relief grant. The Higher Education Emergency Relief Fund will provide grants to eligible students who were enrolled on or after March 13th of 2020. Any student, including citizens, permanent residents, dreamers, or undocumented students can apply. The application will be open the week of February 28th. Visit luc.edu slash h-e-e-r-f to apply. And when we come back, we hear from Loyola students about recent crime reports on campus. Also, we recap the premiere of the Loyola Project, a documentary about the 1963 Ramblers. They said I would never become a doctor. They said my skin was too dark. I should straighten my hair. They thought my nose was too big. They counted me out too many times to count. Because I fight to be heard, they call me an angry black woman. My hair was distracting. I would never start my own business. I say my skin empowers me. Take it or leave it. I say don't touch my hair. I am a black doctor. I own my own practice, and because of this, I'm changing lives every single day. My blackness is empowering. My skin, my hair, my confidence, my culture, my community is empowering. So believe it. So believe it. So believe it. Loyola Campus Safety has sent out two crime alerts within the last week. Last Friday, a Loyola employee was the victim of a carjacking on the 6400 block of North Sheridan Road. It happened just before 4 in the morning. Yesterday, a Loyola student was the victim of a strong-armed robbery on the 6200 block of North Kenmore Avenue. That crime was at 9.15 in the morning. You can report a crime to Campus Safety by calling 773508-SAFE. And as the weather gets warmer, crime around Loyola's campuses will likely pick up. Mary Planky reports on the latest. Over the course of the last week, Loyola students and faculty have received two separate emails about two incidents on the Lakeshore campus. In the dark, I would say definitely bring someone with you, um, carrying some sort of like pepper spray or um, uh, yeah, something small like that just uh, um, for self-defense. Students are encouraged to stay vigilant and pay attention to their surroundings on any of Loyola's campuses. The police are here to protect you, your staff is here to protect you, so any, if you feel like you're in trouble or something, please don't be afraid to ask for help. If students see any suspicious activities, they are told to call campus safety. Mary Planky, Loyola News, Chicago. Loyola is hosting a series of roundtable discussions with the goal of promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Two, two sessions held earlier this week focused on accessibility and race. Each future discussion has a noon session and a 5 p.m. session. When registering for a discussion, you'll be asked to answer several questions about yourself, including how you identify your race, gender, and sexual orientation. Loyola's new Vice President for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, Dominique Jordan-Turner, is hosting these meetings. The Loyola men's basketball team pulled its first 50-plus point victory in conference play at the home closer last night. The Ramblers took down the Evansville Purple Aces 82-31. to Loyola shot 60% from the field, while Evansville shot just 25%. The game was also senior night, where seven seniors on Loyola's roster were honored for their contributions to the team. Head coach Drew Valentine spoke about the impact they've had at a press conference after the game. It's awesome to send those the seniors out the right way. Um, I mean, I think you guys all saw that at the game how 
emotional tonight was for me. Uh, they, these guys mean so much to me. Um, they mean so much to the program, to the, to the university, to the athletic department, uh, to the city. And Loyola will next face Northern Iowa this Saturday. The two teams will battle for the number one seed in the MVC tournament in St. Louis next week. The Loyola Project, a documentary about the 1963 championship team, is now available to watch. The film premiered for Loyola students and fans February 11th in Gentile Arena. Loyola's own sister Jean even made an appearance. The Loyola Project tells the tale of the 1963 Ramblers and their March Madness victory, the only NCAA tournament title to come out of the state of Illinois to date. Graduate guard Lucas Williamson narrated and wrote for the film. He said he hopes its viewers can apply the lessons they learned from the documentary to current events. Yes, this is a story about people that and what they went through in the 60s, but there's still a lot of things that they had to go through that we're still dealing with today. The film culminates in the game of change between the integrated Rambler squad and the segregated, segregated Mississippi State team in the Mideast Regional Semifinal. The Loyola Project will be shown at 63 schools across the country this spring and will be available to stream on Paramount Plus coming soon. And in case you missed them, here are some of the most entertaining stories of the last week. In California's South Lake Tahoe, police have been flooded with calls about a 500-pound black bear dubbed Hank the Tank. He's broken into dozens of homes in the area looking for food. On Facebook, the police department says they are looking for the best option for both Hank and for the safety of homeowners. They also want people to stop calling the police department about Hank. A teenager from Minnesota has won $1,800 from his mom after staying off social media for six years. When Sievert Klefsas was 12, his mom Lorna offered him the money if he could avoid social media until he turned 18. Lorna says it's the best money she's ever spent. And finally, the Chicago Tribune is reporting that Michael Jordan's mansion in Highland Park has now been on the market for 10 years. The house is more than 56,000 square feet, according to the article, and has a regulation-sized basketball court. It also has a 15-car garage, tennis court, and putting green. It's currently listed for just under $15 million. I cannot believe that size of that house. I think that 15 car garage is just insane. Yeah, that's absolutely nuts. And for that price tag, it's no wonder that no one's bought it yet. Yep. All right, that is our news for today. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time for Loyola News Chicago. Have a great day.